Hey folks, Jonathan here. Uh, walked into this truck because I've got to get some subframe for Wrecker. And to be honest with you, I couldn't remember if I used 2 by 6 or, or what I used on this one. And I, I figured I'd go ahead and get the same thing. But uh, while I'm down here, I'll show you this. This is a uh, retrofit I started on. This is an old Holmes Mechanical. It's a 525. And... Uh, as you can see I had to build a lot of bracing on it and I, I started on this on uh, tow 411 on the billboard and uh, I had to stop on this and I'm actually going to put it put the actual bed on another truck but uh, this is what I've done I was talking about on the other one how I plated it all the way down this is uh, actually 5 sixteenths I think is what it is and it it runs the you know just about the full length of the subframe and the all the way back and actually I cut out for the rear end and, and run it completely to the back and that strengthened it up a lot because I didn't double plate this frame and that was the reason I'd done it like this and uh, which strengthened it up and the truck we're building we're not going to do this on we're going we'll run you know smaller pieces we may run one big piece under where you know part of the flowing gear and stuff's at but uh, we'll work with it as we go but just wanted to show you this one uh, you know, I had to put these uprights on and then uh, made the entire boom, made these these uh, braces to keep it from pushing back. And uh, the boom is basically just about finished. I was working on the end up there. I've got more to do to get the pins mounted for the cylinders. And uh, I've got the inside boom done, the cylinder for the inside. Uh, a lot of steel in this one. A lot, you know, a lot heavier unit. You know, this is uh, inch and a quarter thick. A lot of plate uh, you know it's done right it's just you know I'll have to get back on it and to get it finished control valves I was working on the levers you know running levers on both sides so, you know we've just held up on it a little bit but be back on this one sometime you know no hurry I mean it's, it's not eating anything sitting here uh, I didn't get to get the boom primed so uh, I'd like to have done that but you know my next step on this one's gonna be uh, the back of the cylinder mount and then all the uh, the end of it up there where the cylinders mount, you know, everything's done down here. Uh, pretty decent unit. I've got two 20,000 pound planetary hydraulic winches. I think they're braiding. And then I've got the uh, the two original winches, which, you know, the, the 525, it's not, you know, it's basically the same as the 600, just an older style. They move the, the drums to the back instead of the front. Uh, they pull like you wouldn't believe. Now, I don't like this. You know, so I'm going to be doing some bracing to help, you know, support these booms, or these winch drums harder. I'm sorry, winch drums, but uh, maybe you can I'll back up a little bit where you can see it here. And uh, nice unit. The boom inside is, uh, I think it's 9 by 9 And, uh, or I think it was actually an 8 by 8 that I plated some. So it's, it's but it's 9 by 9 on the ID of that boom there. And uh, as you can see, it's half inch plate top, uh, three eighths plate bottom, and then the sides are three eighths. And uh, you know, I'll do some little supporting here and there. So I mean, I'm building this one not to ever break, and it's got plenty of cylinder on it. Uh, you know, it's got big cylinders on it, but the reason it's got big ones is because that's what I came along. You know, most of this uh, I bought the subframe. I bought these as drops. Uh, I bought some of the steel, well, quite a bit of the steel new for the boom and built it. But uh, but just about everything else, all this was scrap that I had this floor before. All the side plate was scrap that I had. Uh, you know, a lot of the pieces and parts and stuff like that. But, you know, sometime we'll get back on this one. It's really not that far from uh, being where I need it because, you know, like I said, the newer wreckers, when you, when you build it like this on a subframe and then all you're building is, is two toolboxes, one for each side, and you're leaving the center open, it makes it a lot easier to work on it. It makes it a lot easier to get to the hoses and all that. But, you know, this bed is actually a lot farther along than what you would think. The uh, finishing this one won't take, won't take too long. Won't be bad. And uh, like I said, well, I'm going to find a different truck I, to put it on. I've got it on an old cab over, and I don't like the cab over. I'm going to, you know, change it around, find an old uh, single axle Peterbilt or something like that. Or I might sit it on a, you know, on a tandem, but I doubt it. But, uh, you know, it's 
like I said, brace good, built good. And, uh, but I'll show more on this one later. We're not through with it for sure by any means. And, uh, you know, it's, it, like I said, it's not eating anything sitting here. So sometime soon, maybe we'll, we'll get back to work on it. All right. I'm off to buy some, uh, subframe for the other truck. Show you more later. picked up and we're gonna have just a little bit left over and we'll cut it into two 10 foot sections and that'll be our subframe or the you know the rails for our subframe and uh, we'll do some cross members in it and probably won't do much on cross members because remember this is gonna mount on the outside of our uh, our carriage for our slider and I'll show you about where it's gonna mount okay folks frame width on the trucks 34 inches and you figure that we picked up two, you know, the, we're going to have two two-inch rails running up, so that's 30 inches. So that's going to be the 30 inch on the ID of the, uh, of the subframe. And I think, if I remember right, from the outside of this one, the outside of this one's about 27 and a half. So that gives us two and a half inches to make up, so that's inch and a quarter. So our subframe's going to run an inch and a quarter out from here and what I want to do is tie that subframe into this and this of course is stronger than than what that subframe is with the thickness so uh, we're going to tie it in front and back and center and wherever and it'll all be one solid piece when we're done and uh, that will just leave me running probably because you know this, this is going to be I think this end is the one that's going to be at the back of the truck so what that's going to do is leave me with uh, going to the front side and putting one cross member in because this rail is only 68 inches and uh, our subframe is going to be just a little bit under 120 inches. So uh, and we may add two in up toward the front, but uh, this will sort of be our cross members and uh, you know help support that subframe. And then uh, of course there'll have to be a plate across the back here that bolts on. To be able to get my rail or my trolley in and out but that's our plans there and i'll show you the cylinder we're going to use okay here's our cylinder this cylinder is actually way longer than what we need and it looks terrible from the outside it's been stored in my shop for a long time uh, back in the corner but this thing is really in real good shape it's got good fluid in it uh, good clean fluid and the, the shaft has no pitting or anything in it and it actually still moves for you. You can move it by hand pretty easy. And uh, I'll check and see. When you're checking the extension, you know, what these extend, you know, it's, it's easiest to pull it all the way out and push it all the way back in. Don't get me wrong, but, you know, you always figure that it's not going to go past your fitting on that end. So we'll go right on this side of the fitting. And then if we measure all the way to the other fitting, we've got a... Uh, you know, uh, we guess and say a 58 inch stroke on this cylinder, and all we need is 39 to 40. But one of the reasons 
I found a few cylinders that was just a little bit shorter than what I needed, but that's the problem. I don't want to go shorter. With building this cylinder and doing it myself, uh, I'm going, I know I'm going to have to redo this pin. It was welded in, and I don't know if it's going to come out or what we're going to do, but we'll, if we have to, we'll redo this end of it. Because, uh, you know, like I said, we need to, we're going to cut it here and shorten it anyway. And uh, the uh, the front side, the pin's been welded in it also. So basically what we're going to do is let's just pretend like we're going to take 10 inches out of the cylinder. We would come to the edge of this fitting if we want to keep this fitting and not have to put a new one in it. But we would come actually right to the edge of it, close to the edge and cut it. And then we'd come up our or 10 inches and we would actually cut the cylinder in half and then uh, bring this end back up and weld it to it and that would shorten our bore by 10 inches but we want to keep that weld to where it's not going to the pistons not going to pass by it because if it passes by it'll tear your your packings up on your piston but I mean you can actually recap and and just shorten this up other ways but this would be the easiest as long as this pin comes out and it's still, you know everything's still good there and then uh, what we'll do on the shaft, instead of taking it apart and taking the piston out and cutting the shaft on this end, we will cut it on this end. Now uh, we'll figure out where we need it cut. We'll just cut the shaft and then we'll re-weld a, a new T on it. And that would that's all it takes to you know, shorten the cylinder up. And uh, like I said, this cylinder is in, in really, really good shape. It, you know, it'll shine right up. There's no pitting on the shaft whatsoever. And uh, and I know it'll move my hand because it it had to soak me in there and get me all wet every little bit ago. But uh, it's in really good shape. Looks bad on the outside, but it's not bad. And uh, we'll shorten it up and do what we need to do, and then we'll uh, we'll repack it, and that will be our extension cylinder. And with it being on the rollers and stuff, we shouldn't have any trouble power-wise. I think this one. This will be a three inch bore inside. And uh, I can figure, you know, I can figure with the pressure and the weight of what that's going to push, but it's going to be more than what we need. And uh, I think with the rollers and the way that we're doing this, we don't need two cylinders, you know, pushing. And, uh, and the only way to make two cylinders push even is to actually use a, a flow divider that equalizes the flow. And, uh, so if you ran two cylinders and you just teed the lines together, you know, the, it's going, the fluid's going to take path of least resistance. It's going to push the cylinder that's easiest, so you can still cock it sideways using two. So uh, it's really not going to help us by doing that. But this is the cylinder we plan to use. And uh, I'll show you one more thing I decided on. Just a second. Okay, my other decision I made. I don't think we're going to run two cylinders on this. Normally I always run two cylinders when I build them. I just like having two cylinders. But the main reason is the side pulling off the side. Of, you know, when you run your cable out the boom and you're actually, you know, pulling at an angle. And uh, this unit, we're not going to have that problem because we're going to be able to swing the boom in line with what we're pulling. So I think I'm going to go back on what I said and put a single cylinder, not this one, but a longer and I, you know, I've located that, what I need for that. We're going to put a single cylinder from the bottom all the way down low, you know, up to somewhere in here. But uh, we will uh, get that worked out as we go. But that's just one change I did make on it. Uh, I don't think we're going to need two, but like I said, we're no, no side pulling, so we should be fine there. But uh, anyway, didn't get anything done today work-wise, but uh, just figured I'd go ahead and update everybody anyway on the parts and what I've decided to do and you know what I've what I've got to work with here and uh, still waiting on our cutter for our uh, mag drill to be able to go ahead and get on that trolley but uh, if I'm not real busy tomorrow and we have been real busy today on a Monday but if I'm not real busy tomorrow we're going to start on the subframe uh, and I'm going to go ahead and quit now because I need to go around and check some antifreeze and some vehicles that I had bought and uh, do something with a rat rod build we didn't put antifreeze in it and go ahead and get all that situated and get some firewood in and uh, eat some supper so I'm gonna do what I can do tomorrow and hopefully we can get some good video up uh, till then appreciate everybody subscribe don't forget to comment
like, and until next time, bye.